Hello. Today we will talk about what is a data warehouse. When you store data into a database, there are two ways to store the data. One, storing in a normalized form, that is nothing but storing in third normal form, that is suggested by Bill and Mon. Second, storing the data in a denormalized form, which is suggested by Ralph Kimball. Whenever we talk about a data warehouse, it always stores data in denormalized form. So what do you mean by storing data in denormalized form? This means that your data is in second normal form. This means that your data is redundant. Since data is redundant, it might take more storage area to store the data. But the advantage is, it is very quick while retrieving the data. The major purpose of building a data warehouse is to provide aggregated data which helps in decision making. The data could be aggregated based on the subject area, based on the business questions which business is asking, and based on that, you could build a data warehouse in a way to answer all your questions. Let me give you a quick overview of how you can build a data warehouse. A data warehouse is usually built from your OLTP system or a system which you are already using to store your data. We call it operational systems or any form of system, any form of data. You might store the data in flat files, a normal text file, or you might be using a database system, or you might just store it in an Excel sheet. In any way, in your existing system, you should be storing the data in some way, and that will be the source while building the data warehouse. The usual architecture of a data warehouse goes like this. You have your operational system. From that, we create an integration layer. This integration layer usually consists of two sub-layers. One is a staging layer. A staging layer is nothing but a copy of your operational system data. Since your operational system is live and it might be getting data every day, and then we don't want to touch your existing system and we don't really want to mess with the data which is used in day-to-day -day operation, so the first thing what you do while creating a data warehouse is create a copy of your existing data into some other place and we call this staging layer and from this staging layer usually projects take different approaches of building the next layer after staging layer you can also have another layer for operational data store you can design the system uh, in, in a way that it can help to build the data warehouse later. After, after integration, what we do is we build the data warehouse. In data warehouse, facts and dimensions are separated. They are interlinked in such a way that it is very easy to access. After building the data warehouse, some projects do go ahead and build data marts. These data marts are strategic layers, which are separated in such a way that it could answer a business question in a specific way. These data marts could help in segregating the functional data. Let us say your finance department has some business questions which needs to be answered out of data warehouse. They can create their own data mart and your marketing team would need some answers from the data warehouse and they can create their own data mart so these data marts are built in such a way that it, it is helpful for that specific department so this helps in such a way that um, each department can aggregate their data or change their data the way they want to answer the business questions without affecting the data which is stored in the data warehouse so the actual data could be untouched but you can aggregate the way you want and i would like to talk about two more things okay now I said data is moved from your system to an integration layer and from integration layer to a data warehouse and from a data warehouse to different data marts so how the data moves is also important to move this data from one place to another place we use a process called ETL ETL is nothing but extract transform and load that exactly means that you extract the data from the source you transform it and then you load it to the destination there are many tools which can do etl really well the major tools which are in the market are ibm infosphere data stage informatica power center and talent ab initio lots and lots and there are so many open source and free etl tools as well like Pentaho. Talent also has Talent Open Studio, which is a free and community edition from Talent. Okay, now let's go a little deep into how data is stored in a data warehouse. So as I said earlier, the data in data warehouse is always denormalized. That means the data can be redundant. The data can repeat itself multiple times. The modeling of data warehouse is called dimensional modeling. In dimensional modeling, we segregate facts and dimensions. So let me give you an example. Let's say you, you sell watches. A dimension of for this watch 
watch is the color of the watch or the size of the watch or the type of the watch whether it's a digital watch or an analog watch so these are the dimensions of the watch and a fact is i sold five watches today that's a fact. So these facts and dimensions are interrelated. They need to have a common key to join between them. Whenever I store data into my data warehouse, I don't need to store that I sold a black digital watch at 11 a.m. I sold a black digital watch at 12 p.m. I sold a black digital watch at 1 p.m. I sold a black digital watch at 2 p.m. You don't need to do that. So what you do is you put that black digital watch into dimension and then you store, I sold it at 1 p.m. I sold it at 2 p.m. I sold it at 3 p.m. or whatever the time it is. That's how you segregate facts and dimensions. Anything which describes the product is a dimension. Any other data which could define a measure is a fact. I hope you got a quick overview of how you build a data warehouse and how the data is stored in a data warehouse. I believe you enjoyed learning this.